So first and foremost, I mean, should anyone be surprised that this president doesn't want to be part of something called the World Trade Organization? <clears throat> well, nobody should be surprised because <laughs> Donald Trump has made his animosity to free trade clear for decades. But what's striking is just how uh, destructive his policies are being right now. I mean, this this clearly caters to his you know preconceptions, but it's hurting U.S. workers, it's hurting U.S. companies, it's hurting U.S. farmers who are part of his constituency. So it doesn't make any sense in terms of U.S. economic or strategic interest. It only makes sense because Donald Trump has had this irrational animus for years against free trade. But Max, I mean, liberal Democrats have issues with the WTO as well. Do you actually see, I mean, rubber meeting the road here in terms of Jeremy Diamond called it something of a pipe dream, you know, in terms of getting anything through on Capitol Hill. It, or is this, could this be something that the president really is pushing for? Or is this just, I don't know, smart messaging on Donald Trump's part because it's kind of true to form? It could be just a, a wish on Donald Trump's part that, that may not be granted by Congress, but he has already taken uh, a vast amount of discretionary authority granted to the president and really misused it because remember, he's used. Uh, these national security provisions to throw tariffs onto goods from the European Union, from Canada, uh, Mexico. These are countries that are not national security threats to the United States. Instead of granting more discretion to the president, Congress should be taking it away. I mean, this is Republicans on Capitol Hill who profess to be free traders. They're not doing anything. They're not stopping this power grab by Donald Trump. Now, maybe they won't give him more authority, but he's already misusing the authority that they have. And it's, it's a shame that they are not willing to, to claw back uh, the power they've granted the presidency in, in decades past. And this is just a draft, right? I mean, some of the reporting is that the draft was leaked out in order to hurt its chances of actually seeing the light of day. But it, it has me thinking that when you're advising presidential candidates, would you draft, you know, somewhat unusual um, policy proposals that c clearly weren't going to see the light of day? I mean, is this just par for the course and this one leaked out? Or is this something unusual? Well, this says. You know, this, Donald Trump is unlike any other uh, presidential candidate or president that we've ever had. I mean, you know, he has very different ideas and he doesn't operate by uh, kind of established policy making procedures. So, you know, I'm not sure exactly where this came from in the administration, but this is clearly scratching an inch for him because of his incredible uh, hatred towards the WTO, towards NAFTA, towards NATO, towards the entire alliance uh, structure and, and the free trade structure. Uh, that U.S. policymakers created in the 1940s. I mean, remember that Dean Acheson, who was uh, Harry Truman's Secretary of State, uh, titled his memoirs, uh, Present at the Creation. Well, if a member of the Trump administration were to write his memoirs, I think they would have to call it Present at the Destruction, because Donald Trump it seems to be bent on one way or another on destroying this post-World War II Pax Americana created by the greatest generation. Well, and that actually gets to um, the larger kind of conversation of the Trump doctrine in right now. I mean, the president is not letting up on his attacks of international alliances. You've talk, you talked, you mentioned his most re most recently it was NATO is as bad as NAFTA, and now it's the EU. Just listen to listen to him from the weekend. Listen. The European Union is possibly as bad as China, just smaller. Okay, it's terrible what they do to us. So. If this is the Trump doctrine, which is essentially hit U.S. allies and hug U.S. adversaries, do you see any real alignment, though, happening in real time? Well, this is something that Donald Trump can do. I mean, he has vast power as president, and it is just perverse. I mean, his view of the European Union as being a threat to the United States is just bonkers, and that's the exact reverse of the view held by every U.S. president, going back to Harry Truman, who have all encouraged Euro European integration and have seen a Europe united and strong, as, as John F. Kennedy put it, as a bulwark of, of containment of Russia and as a great friend and ally of the United States. Donald Trump has this incredible, has this hatred of the European Union, essentially because they sell us stuff that we want to buy. He thinks that Germany is a national security threat because they sell us a lot of cars that Americans want to buy. I mean, this makes no sense. But de facto, uh, by bashing the European Union, by raising doubts about the future of NATO, de facto, Donald Trump is advancing the Russian foreign policy agenda. Uh, because this is exactly what Russia wants to see. Russia wants to see the destruction of the Atlantic Alliance, and Donald Trump is 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 uh, 
seemingly advancing uh, towards that goal. This is not in America's see, interest. This is in uh, Russia's interest. Do you see that? Do you see a real realignment happening, though, or is this? I, I always am trying to cut through what Donald Trump is ta- talking about on on Twitter versus what is happening, kind of in reality. Oh, I think you're, you're going to see a real realignment happening uh, because you know this. It's not you know Donald Trump's Twitter feed is really. A, a uh, window into his innermost thinking, and this is, and he acts on it. We've seen that time and again. Yeah. Uh, there is uh, not a disconnect between his Twitter feed and his actions. There's sometimes a time delay between his Twitter feed and his actions, but he is acting on this. I mean, you already saw last month the most acrimonious G7 summit in, 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 in history with Donald Trump feuding with our Democratic allies. There's another NATO summit coming up in a couple weeks' time, which could be just as acrimonious. There could be, there's, there's a summit with Putin uh, where the Europeans are petrified that he is going to sell them out and he's going to recognize the illegal Russian annexation of Crimea, something that John Bolton refused to rule out yesterday. I mean, this is a series of incremental steps. It's not like he's destroyed NATO overnight, but he is chipping away at the foundations of the Atlantic Alliance and if you know he were to last in office eight years, I you know it would be a miracle if if the if the Atlantic Alliance in its present form uh, survives the Trump presidency. Wow. All right, Max. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.